Hi, Andrew here. As you're probably aware, I am a gigantic whore for best millimeter. So when James asked me to compare the G20 to the G29, look at velocity and terminal effect and that sort of thing, obviously I jumped at the chance. Both the G20 and G29 are 10 millimeter pistols, but the G29 has a shorter grip and a shorter barrel, making it a compact pistol, at least in comparison to the G20. Both pistols are the SF or short frame version. Generally speaking, a shorter barrel ought to result in lower velocity, but to what degree will the shorter G29 barrel influence velocity? To find out, I took both pistols out to the range and fired six different 10 millimeter loads through them. Obviously, 10 millimeter is a cartridge that doesn't make a lot of sense if it's not going Ricky Bobby fast. When Colonel Jeff Cooper, peace be upon him, came down from the mountain with a mighty Bren 10 at his side, it was loaded with the holy normal. It was then decreed that the 10 millimeter auto shall be composed of a 200 grain bullet at 1200 feet per second, and he saw that it was good. Without that best millimeter speed, it's just a 40 short and weak, right? And if the G29's barrel is not producing real 10 millimeter velocities, then you're just paying extra and producing a lot of muzzle flash and blast without any real gain. A G27 subcompact or a G23 compact in 40 Smith & Wesson might make more sense if you want a small pistol. Or a G20 might make more sense if you want a large pistol and want that Tim Allen factor of the best millimeter. That is, if the velocities were a lot slower in the G29. To be honest, I expected the velocity difference to be pretty significant. I was all prepared to denigrate the G29 as a pointless pistol that's little more than a fat and sloppy G27. But as it turns out, I was wrong. The velocity difference between the two was not that profound. Although the G20 SF did produce higher velocities in every case, the increase was mostly negligible. The biggest difference between the two came with the Ventura Heritage 180 grain jacketed hollow point, which was a whopping 67 foot per second increase from the G29 to the G20. Now, please note that this is not an exhaustive list. Other loads could produce bigger differences, slower powders are likely to do better in longer barrels, and it seems that the lighter or faster loads tended to produce a bigger difference. But at least within the confines of this test, it seems like there's not a big difference between G20 and G29 velocities. But this video wouldn't be complete without a gel test, and I know that I would hear mucho feelings from you guys if I didn't do some gel testing in a 10 millimeter video. So we're gonna do a comparison that I've wanted to do for a very long time. We're gonna take a look at Underwood's 220 grain hard cast, and we're gonna compare it to Lehigh's 140 grain extreme penetrator. I lined up a lot of gel because I expect both of these are gonna go pretty deeply. So let's get out to the range and fire each round through both pistols. I knew the penetration was going to be deep, but I was completely unprepared for just how insanely deep it would be and I had to rearrange the blocks. Even after flipping the last block around and with gel blocks hanging off both ends of the table, the Underwood hardcast powered through all four gel blocks. This thing is a monster. Let's see how it does from the shorter barrel. Again, it honey badgered through the whole thing. The Lehigh load was a lot less extreme. It penetrated roughly half as deeply as the hard cast. And the story wasn't much different from the shorter barrel, although it did go just a little further. This is why we do testing, folks. If you had asked me five minutes before taking these shots what the results would be, 
I would have said that both the hardcast and the extreme penetrator would probably go around 30 or 40 inches and that I wouldn't be surprised if either came out on top. I was leaning toward the hardcast, but I simply had no idea how far it could go. Out of both pistols, the Underwood 220 grain hardcast penetrated over 5 feet of ballistic gel, and it was still going. We still don't really know what the limit is, but I know that to find out, I'd probably need a couple thousand dollars worth of gel and another table. Okay, so this was a pretty big surprise to me, really. I expected that it would go pretty deep, uh, but I did not expect that the Underwood 220 grain hard cast would go through four gel blocks, 62 and a half inches, and it was still going. Honestly, we still don't know how deep this goes. But we do know that the penetration from this load is measured in feet. Uh, to put it in perspective, I'm 72 inches tall. <laughs> that line of gel blocks was 10 inches shorter than I am. That is impressive no matter how you measure it. On the other hand, the Lehigh Extreme Penetrator didn't penetrate very extremely. It penetrated about 25 and about 27 inches. So, less than half of what the Underwood 220 grain hardcast did. Um, does that make it useless? No, of course not. And with its higher velocity, that means it should produce a fair amount of fragmentation from bones when it strikes bones. And of course, higher velocity bullets tend to get through hard obstacles better than lower velocity bullets. So it is actually possible that the Lehigh bullet can get through say a bare skull better than the 220 grain hard cast. However, I'm thinking that for all but like the largest, most gargantuan, ridiculously prehistoric bears, I'm thinking both of them are gonna get through the bear skull just fine. I'm sorry, I didn't have any bears on hand to shoot in the face to test this empirically. In either case, I think both of them would make a fairly decent large animal defense load, but for the purposes that James asked for, that is defense against large bears in Alaska, I'm definitely going with the Underwood 220 grain hard cast. Now, how do the two pistols compare to each other for carry? Well, the G20 is obviously larger. It has a larger grip, which means my stubby carny fingers can get around all of it without having my pinky tucked in underneath as with the G29. The G20 has a longer sight radius and being slightly heavier and a bigger slide, it has a little less felt recoil. All those things together make it more pleasurable to shoot. It's um, easier to get on target and it's less flippy than the G29. And of course the G20 holds half again as much ammo. On the other hand, Obviously, the G29 being smaller is more concealable. So as far as a trail defense gun, I think the G20 wins hands down. It is just more shootable and it carries more bullets. But as we saw from the velocity testing, velocity isn't the reason to not carry a G29. If you're looking for a concealed carry best millimeter, the G29 may not be a bad idea. And of course, loading it with the full size normal magazines um, mitigates that grip issue a bit. So if you're trying to choose between the two, either one I think is fairly viable. I went into this expecting that the G29 would be kind of a but why gun because I expected that I'd see significantly less velocity out of the G29 and if you're getting less velocity out of a 10 millimeter, well, you might as well carry a 40 because a G23 is <laughs> a lot easier to carry than either a G20 or G29. But I was wrong, and I'm happy to admit that when it happens on the rare occasion. Either way, I think you're going to do well. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it if you were choosing between the two, which one's better and why. If you think I got something wrong, if you just want to tell me peace to all worlds, leave a comment below. As always, like, share, and subscribe. That helps YouTube understand the kind of videos that you'd like to watch. And of course it makes you see more TFB videos, but it also means you get to see more gun videos in general if you interact with the videos that you like. If you have the time, head on over to Ventura Munitions website. They're our sponsor and they make tests like these possible. They provided most of the ammunition that I used in the velocity testing. See what they have in stock, then come back over here and tell us what you wanna see us test next. 
Have a great day. Wow. I don't know what else to say. <laughs>